This episode starts out in Cuba, where Popclaw is hiding out, doing drugs. But the good news is the A-Train has shown up, and he tells her that Madeline Stilwell is willing to let their relationship go public. But before they do, he needs to know exactly who she told about Compound V, and she ends up caving. She tells him about Billy and the other four guys, but she doesn't really know anything about Billy or his name or anything. She just describes him. After she spills the beans... The A-Train whips her around the room and injects her with two doses of heroin. And this makes it look like she overdosed, even though it was actually a murder. Now, the A-Train didn't want to do this, but he's told to at the behest of Homelander. And when he gets back to the offices, he tells Homelander that the job is done, but now Homelander is worried that he is addicted to Compound V. The A-Train tells him not to worry, I quit cold turkey, but it's hard to figure out if that's true or if he's just broken up about what happened with Popclaw. He heads over to Popclaw's apartment and starts watching old sex tapes of him and her, and at the very end of one, he sees what happened with Popclaw and her landlord. But he ends up hearing Billy's voice, and he ends up seeing Frenchie's face. So he takes Frenchie's face to the IT guys at Vaught and has them ID him. Frenchie is ID'd, but he's also ID'd with his 38 known addresses. So now at least the A-Train has a lead on who knows about the Compound V, and that's Frenchie. He starts looking for Frenchie, but Frenchie is taking care of the Asian girl that they have chained up. Frenchie is trying to play good cop. He's made her a really nice dinner. He's trying to talk to her, but it doesn't really work because she ends up trying to attack him anyway. Luckily, she's chained up and can't kill him. So unbeknownst to Frenchie, people are looking for him while his main concern is just trying to butter up this girl. Now, while that's going on, Billy, Mother's Milk, and Huey have gone to the Believe Expo where Homelander and Starlight are going to appear. Now, Starlight grew up going to these with her mother, and she thought it would kind of be a healing thing for her, get back to her roots a little bit because she knows everybody involved with this festival. And she's doing so with Huey right at her side. She's explaining to Huey how she grew up with these people, how her mother was taking her to all these different events, and how she feels really comfortable with these people and around these people. But she's still there to do publicity for the Seven, so she gets taken away, and that frees up Huey to go talk to Billy and Mother's Milk. And while Huey was hanging out with Starlight, Mother's Milk and Billy were scoping the place out and realized it is heavily guarded. And they need to get to the main guy at this festival, the guy named Ezekiel, who was in that skeevy nightclub jerking dudes off. But it's going to be hard to get to him with such a security force. Luckily, though, they have Huey, and Huey knows Starlight, and Starlight can get him in. But Huey is very reluctant to ask Starlight to do this, because normally, to get in this VIP experience, it's $15,000, and he doesn't want to make it look like he's using her. They've only been on about a date and a half, and he thinks it's going to look suspicious if he goes up to her and says, Hey, can you get me into this $15,000 event with your friends? But there's really no other choice. Huey asks them, what do you want me to say? Why exactly are you smuggling drugs? And Billy says, yeah, pretty much, because you're going to use this video of him jerking guys off as a ransom to get the information that you need. So Huey heads over to Starlight and asks her if she can get him in, and it goes about as well as you thought. She is definitely suspicious and definitely feels like she's being used, but she ends up doing it. We'll go back to Starlight and Howie in a little bit, because the other member of the Seven that is supposed to show up at this event is Homelander. But Homelander's busy doing a vigil for all the people who were lost in that plane crash where he obviously could have saved everybody. And he's doing it with Queen Maeve, who is still distraught about the fact that she could have done more. Queen Maeve is so mad that she actually leaves the vigil early and goes and gets drunk. Afterwards, she heads to an ex-girlfriend's house... But the ex-girlfriend doesn't want anything to do with her and says, why don't you go back to Homelander? So Queen Maeve, she's playing on both teams. Respect, girl. But at one point, Queen Maeve actually breaks down because of the fact that she could have saved people. And when her ex-girlfriend goes to console her, Queen Maeve tries to start something, but it's quickly ended by the ex. Now, the other half of that is Homelander, who after the vigil goes to the event and wants to talk about his talking points with Madeline Stilwell, but she's not there, the head of communications is. But he has no interest in talking about it with her. He wants to talk about it with Madeline Stilwell. So he flies off and finds her as she's walking her son into a doctor's appointment. He demands that they talk about the talking points, but Madeline Stilwell says, no, I've rescheduled this doctor's appointment three times already. I'm going in and doing this doctor's appointment. He doesn't like the fact that Madeline Stilwell wants him to be very conservative and toe the line because he says this crowd is edgy. They hate immigrants. They love America. They're very religious. We should be attacking their strengths. But Madeline doesn't want him to make that kind of speech. He wants him to toe the line. But he's pissed off that she's not going to be there and she can't do anything about it. So he's going to do the speech that he wants to do. So while Homelander riles up the conservatives of America, Starlight is having a problem because she's doing this youth group discussion and she's having an issue. 
The youth are asking her about premarital sex, and she wants to give the actual answer, but she's getting pressured to give the correct answer, if you know what I mean. She's realizing that maybe this scene just isn't for me, but she's getting pressured by her mother to continue with this charade because her mother says she quote-unquote worked so hard at this, she's got friends at home watching, even though Starlight wants nothing to do with this scene anymore. So she's pretty conflicted about the message she's sending, and on top of it, her kind of boyfriend might be using her to get to the head of the event. It's a tricky situation for Starlight. Now, while this event is going on, Billy gets a call from his ex-wife's sister, and he immediately leaves. You learn that his ex-wife vanished, and the family wants to put a gravestone up because they just want to go somewhere and mourn the loss of their family member. But Billy's thing is, she's still out there. We can't put a headstone up if she's out there, which she is. But Billy's having none of it, so he ends up going to the cemetery and destroying the headstone and then heading back to the Holy Roller event. So while Billy was off smashing headstones, Huey actually got into that meeting and he ends up meeting Homelander, who is very suspicious of Huey. He's aware of who Huey is and he ends up baptizing him, but he does it a little bit longer than everybody else in kind of a violent way, if you will. You can just tell he doesn't really trust Huey and Starlight's relationship. Now, after everybody gets baptized, now is Huey's chance to go after Ezekiel, the head of this whole thing. He's trying to get his attention, but Ezekiel is very busy and wants to walk away, and he's trying to show him the video. The problem is, when he got baptized by Homelander, his phone was destroyed, so he can't show him the video. But Huey's no fool, so he acts quickly and says, You slept with me, and in a way claims that he was one of those guys in the video. Now, initially, Ezekiel gets really pissed off and ends up choking him. But when Huey tells him he has a video, he backs off a little bit and asks, what do you want, money? But Huey doesn't want money. He wants to know about Compound V and where it comes from. Ezekiel says, I can't tell you about Compound V. They're going to destroy me. And even though he doesn't say who they are, we know it's Vaught. But Huey grows the set and says, look, you're going to tell me about Compound V or this video is going to go out and it's going to be trending on Twitter. And also, stop with the pray the gay away crap because you're, you're clearly gay and it's not a good message to send. And Ezekiel ends up caving. He tells them that they ship Compound V to hospitals all around the country, and the next shipment is going to be at a NICU unit. So when Billy and Mother's Milk cure this, they head right off to that NICU, and what they learn is that Vault is basically making superheroes. They have all these babies in the NICU that are getting ingested with Compound V and are becoming superheroes. They're not just touched by God. So after a little bit of a squirmish with security, Billy is able to get some of the Compound V and use it as proof. But well, back at the fair, enough is enough, and Starlight has reached a breaking point. She's supposed to give this speech, but she just stops midway through and says, I don't know if any of this is right. She almost puts the deep on blast because she says, well, tomorrow is the guy who shoved his dick in my face. Everybody in the audience is taken aback by this, and after the speech, nobody claps except Huey. And Huey tracks her down and finds her afterwards and tells her that the speech was amazing, but she's pissed off at Huey for using her to get to meet Ezekiel. And that's when Huey uses his final trump card. He tells her that her, his girlfriend died and he needs to get some answers, but the only answers he got was on that stage when she was talking. So luckily, the happy couple has made up a little bit. But unfortunately for that group, Frenchie has been made, and he gets a phone call from his girlfriend that Black Noir and the A-Train were snooping around one of his houses. At least I think it's his girlfriend. It might just be like a girl that he talks to. You know, sometimes you're not exclusive. Anyway, he ends up calling Billy and tells him that I've been made, and Billy tells him to just leave, get out, leave the girl, but he can't do that. As soon as he lets the girl go, she runs out, and Frenchie starts creeping around back alleys to try to escape, but... He ends up running into Black Noir. Black Noir goes after Frenchie and is attacking him. And just as it looks like he's about to kill him, the Asian girl comes out of nowhere and starts going at it with Black Noir. And she puts up a pretty good fight. She's got him on the ropes a little bit, but Black Noir ends up getting the better of it and ends up killing her. Frenchie ends up coming back for her and putting his coat on her dead body, but that's when she pops back up. Because unbeknownst to everybody, one of her superpowers is regeneration. 